It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody. What's going on? It's the Locked On Eagles Podcast. Louis DiBiase joining you in studio, as always. Happy opening training camp day, ladies and gentlemen of Birds Nation, Eagles Mafia, whatever you want to call this incredible fan base. We are finally here. We all have been waiting for this now for months, seemingly, with the Eagles and this dead period. Getting to the football season has been a grind. We've had fun here in the Lockdown Eagles podcast continuing to do all these shows for you, but... I can't tell you how refreshed I feel on today's show because we actually get to recap significant things that happened on the football field at NovaCare Complex today as the Eagles opened up training camp officially day one today. They hit the practice field at noon. Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz talked to the media. We'll get some of their takeaways as well on the show today. We'll get into the play-by-play by the beats. We're going to get into what happened on the field today when it comes to you know significant plays that were made, formations. We'll get an update. Also, the very early start of these position battles, who was atop the depth chart going in. And of course, you got to take that with a grain of salt. It's literally day one of training camp in Everybody's going to get reps. You know, Wendell Smallwood today was working with the first team. Sproles was as well. Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard. So all the running backs seemingly got first team reps. I hope that's not a sign that they're literally going to just be rotating four or five running backs this year. But that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to recap day one of training camp. And hey, if you want up-to-date news throughout training camp, play-by-play, positional updates, uh, injury news, videos of specific plays we have now officially unveiled our 2019 eagles training camp tracker make sure you check that out on lockdowneagles.com so if you're overwhelmed by all the content all the different beat reporters that are posting stuff on twitter we're combining it all and collecting it for you on one tracker on lockdowneagles.com so the biggest takeaways each day throughout training camp, you can find on our website, LockdownEagles.com, and we'll have the podcast posted up there as well, because we're going to continue to do four to five shows a week here. They're not always going to be recaps of the day. We'll probably do a segment each day getting into the biggest takeaways of the practice, but of course, there are bigger topics to be had as well on the show, but that's why we created this training camp tracker for you, is to stay up to date each and every day, because there is only one open practice to the public as disappointing as that is there is only one practice for the the fans so us as the media our job is to keep you in tune with what's going on with this 2019 Eagles team that clearly have very high expectations and that is exactly what the media asked Doug Peterson about today and Carson Wentz is how do you temper those expectations or how do you handle it because we have seen in the past and I thought that's why it was really interesting that Doug Peterson emphasized you know blocking out the outside noise of course that is coach speak 101 it is page one of the coach speak guidelines but I actually took it to heart today with Doug Peterson blocking out that outside noise of the high expectations the Eagles have because he was there during the Dream Team year when seemingly those expectations definitely seeped inside the team. I mean, instantly you had the backup quarterback calling the team a Dream Team before they even played a single game. They were not coming off a Super Bowl run. They had lost in the wild card round of 2010. They didn't win a playoff game in 2009 either. So it wasn't like the Eagles were what they are now. Now, that's why I feel more confident in the expectations this year is because the core of the team has done it before. We talked about that on a podcast about a month ago. So you can check that out in every one of our shows. If you subscribe on any podcast platform, just tell Siri or Alexa to play Locked on Eagles or whatever smart device you have. But I thought it was interesting because Doug Peterson was there during those Dream Team years. He was with Andy Reid on that coaching staff. And I really believe that 
noise, those expectations, while it wasn't all media-based, a lot of it was self-inflicted because the Eagles were just simply adding all these big names, all this talent from free agency into an already great offense with Michael Vick, LaShawn McCoy, Deshaun Jackson, Jeremy Macklin, Brent Selleck, Jason Peters, the list goes on and on. So it was also self-inflicted that, of course, they felt those expectations because they noticed who was coming in. They could tell the front office was trying to take that you know, next and final step to supplant the Green Bay Packers and win a Super Bowl. So Peterson was there. He saw how that affected him. So that's why today when he said blocking the outside noise, you know, if it was Sean McDermott that said that or Adam Gase, you know, or Chip Kelly for that matter when he was with Philadelphia, it wouldn't mean as much to me, but with Peterson and what he has experienced with this Eagles team and also with what just the Eagles, a lot of these players have experienced, you know, you go to 2015 as well, the high expectations that team under justly had it really can affect teams if they let it bother them and Carson Wentz was really emphasizing the same thing that is clearly the goal in mind is the day-to-day get better Peterson talked about getting one percent better every day but the players there's been people that experienced the 2011 season the 2015 season some experience both you know when we're talking about a guy like Jason Peters and Brandon Graham you know those guys experience both of those so you know, the media, of course, you can't help it on paper. Me and Gino have been talking about it all offseason long, just how damn good this team is on paper at literally every single position. And the media, I mean, of course, I would ask the same question. You can't help but ask these guys, hey, Carson Wentz, you have like 10 legitimate offensive weapons this year. I mean, how do you feel about that? How are you going to spread the football around? How do you keep everybody happy? So I would have asked the same questions, but that is definitely what the theme of this offseason is offseason has been because they they do have expectations this year and rightfully so I mean this team won a Super Bowl two years ago last year despite going nine and seven they were a player two away from making the NFC championship game with Nick Foles again at at the helm so you know I thought it was interesting they know how talented they are but you know if this team doesn't gel it could be 2011 all over again. You saw all those players coming in from free agency. They hadn't grown together. They hadn't gone through what this team had gone through the past two seasons. And again, that's the that's the great part about this is this isn't a brand new team. You know, there are new pieces. I would even, you know, Deshaun Jackson was with the Eagles, but this is a new Eagles team that he's with. He was teammates with Jason Peters and Graham and you know, he was with Peterson when Peterson was on the coaching staff in the early 2010s, but you know, Deshaun's new, Jordan Howard is new, you know, there's there's pieces that are new, Miles Sanders for sure, Malik Jackson, Zach Brown, but at the same time, you still have Malcolm Jenkins, you still have your entire, basically your entire offensive and defensive line are still intact from your championship year, your linebacker and Nigel Bradham, your cornerbacks, your offense, so... That's that's the encouraging part, but I do really actually take to heart Peterson saying that they need to block that outside noise because instantly when he said that, I thought, yep, I imagined Vince Young and that dumb Eagles visor from 2011 and chuckling in the stupid way he did and saying Dream Team, and that was that was almost the end of it immediately. And then Michael Vick did the, the same thing the next year where it was, again, self-inflicted, where he called it the redeem team. When you place these labels on you and you make this added pressure to the team, it definitely affects them. So that was the biggest takeaway for Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson at the podium today with the press conferences. We're going to take a quick break here on Lockdown Eagles. When we come back, we'll get into some of the positional battles, the updates with that, some injury updates to get into as well, and then we'll wrap up the show by actually getting into the play-by-play of what happened on the field today, day one of Eagles training camp. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Louis DiBiase joining you on this Thursday edition of the show. College football fans, Locked On is now Locked On SEC and Locked On Big Ten football. Hosted by Dave Hooker with college football expert Chris Landry. Landry has been a scout, a coach, a front office executive, and still today consults NFL and college programs. He brings an angle that gives you the best insight around on the SEC and Big Ten. Follow on your preferred podcast provider at Locked On SEC and Locked On Big Ten. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, Eagles fans all across the globe, we see you in Poland, we see you in Sweden, we see you in New Zealand, and in Great Britain, and Canada, and Mexico, and Haiti, around the world, you guys, there's Eagles fans all across this big blue marble, and we appreciate you guys listening in as we are recapping day one of Eagles training camp, and once again, as I teased in the first segment, check out our training camp tracker, we got play-by-play from all the beat writers, we've got injury updates, we've got videos, you know, the Eagles did a live stream of the beginning of practice, at least before they actually got into the plays, I long for the days of Eagles Live with Dave Spadaro on PhiladelphiaEagles.com growing up as a kid when, I don't know if any of you guys remember, I'm sure a lot of you out there that are my age, in, in your 20s, remember just planting your behind on the chair watching Eagles training camp live for five hours during the afternoon. And that was how at least I planned my day around doing that. So I long for those days, but there are some videos still. And, you know, the beat writers record what they can. I would love to be down there. Locked on Eagles should be down in Philadelphia for training camp next year. But for now, we've got you covered. Hey, again, we're posting more shows than any Eagles podcast out there. And we appreciate you guys choosing us. Uh, CB Wars was really fun yesterday. Make sure you check that out. But for today, I mean, there were some interesting things. First off, just on the injury front, Jalen Mills was placed on the PUP list. I don't know if he's going to get that job back if he doesn't get back there in time. As for Ronald Darby, though, some big news for Darby. It was expected, we talked about it on the show the other day, it was expected that Darby would also start off the year on the PUP list, recovering from a torn ACL. That is actually not the case. Darby did practice in limited fashion, which uh, is... Pretty interesting. I did not think he didn't he didn't play uh, he didn't practice eleven on elevens, but he was limited. I thought he was going to start off on the pup. That's huge for Darby. Like I said on the show yesterday, he's going to get one of those starting outside jobs. But with Maddox, Sidney Jones, and Razul Douglas all looking pretty good this summer at mini camp and now day one of camp, it's early. But if Mills does not get healthy soon he's going to maybe have to bank on his relationship with Jim Schwartz to win him a job. We'll get into some more of the Eagles' uh, cornerback position later on in the show with these positional battles, the updates there. But one thing I got to say, we got to give a tip of the cap to Brandon Brooks. He tore his Achilles six months ago. As someone that's never torn a ligament, I can't really relate to that. But we all know how serious Achilles injuries are. Look at what it's done to Sidney Jones. Look at what it's done to so many different players Across sports, I mean, guys are never the same, seemingly, a lot of the time when you tear your Achilles. I have an aunt that just tore her Achilles, and she, like, isn't going to recover for a year and a half. So, again, it makes you really put things in perspective when you see these athletes be able to recover in, like, seemingly six months. Brooks was not a full participant in practice today, but he was out there in a full uniform and a helmet, and he was starting off the practice in limited fashion, but he was on the field with his teammates six months since a torn Achilles. Like, you look at a torn ACL, Carson Wentz came back from that in nine, nine and a half months. You can get back from a torn ACL seemingly now a lot quicker than you used to, but Achilles injuries are still, like, the major, major injury to your leg. And the fact that a big guy like Brandon Brooks, this 265-plus pound right guard, can recover from a torn Achilles, not fully, but six months down the road, he is already a limited participant in practice, and the Eagles still have, you know, a couple months before, you know, about a month and a half until the regular season starts. I mean, that is huge. Even if he's not going to be ready for week one, the Eagles might only have to be without Brandon Brooks. To me, the best right guard of the past three years in the NFL, they might only have to be without him for a couple weeks of the season, which is, again, just truly mind-blowing. A couple other things here on the injury front. Miles Sanders was a full participant today. He was kind of dealing with a hamstring injury throughout the end of mini camp. So, you know, Doug Peterson talked about it today, how he was a little behind. As a rookie, of course, you want to get him out on the field and really get him progressing with this new-look offense. But Sanders was a full go today as well. And, you know, to get into these positional battles, we talk about the running back position and how... You know, there's four four guys now that could be part of this rotation, and then there's three other guys that have, you know, been 
playmakers on the field before in the past. I don't want to call Wendell Smallwood a playmaker, but he has played significant a significant role with the Eagles the past couple years at running back and seemingly continues to stick on the roster. And, you know, Josh Adams last year led the Eagles in rushing, and while he tailored off down the stretch, he really struggled. The, the middle of the season, Josh Adams looked really good, and then you have this, you know, Darren Sproles light kind of guy in, in uh, Boston Scott. So the running back position has like seven players that have shown at least a little bit on the field, and the Eagles today showed you nothing about what they will do, or they showed you exactly what they will do when it comes to rotations, because Jordan Howard was getting first-team reps on 11-on-11s, and so was Miles Sanders, and uh, you know uh, Darren Sproles was as well, Corey Clement was back at practice today, but he wasn't a full go. So, you know, Clement's another guy that's going to get first team reps. Smallwood got first team reps. So, uh, running back wise, they're going to look like seemingly they're just going to rotate everybody throughout the summer. And, you know, we'll see how that translates into the regular season. I wish somebody would have asked Peterson about that, what he, you know, what the, what the plan is based on running back by committee. Of course, you're, you know, with all this talent at running back, you're going to want to use a lot of these guys, but is there, is Miles Sanders, can he eventually take over as that lead back? Is that going to be Jordan Howard? Somebody did ask what Sproles' role is going to be this year, and Peterson kind of, he, he didn't dodge the question, but he more so turned it into, you know, what they know they have in Sproles. And for me, again, you guys know my thoughts on Sproles, who I'm now blocked by on Twitter. It's fine if he's the third running back and he's ahead of Corey Clement, but I think I think he's, I mean, when it's all said and done, I really like Miles Sanders, but I would I be shocked at all if Sproles has the second most snaps this year, if healthy, which is really never the case. But if he's healthy, if you told me today, hey, only Jordan Howard's going to have more snaps than Sproles next year, would I be shocked? Uh, not in the slightest. Going up front again, we talked about Brandon Brooks here, now getting into positional battles. There is a, a battle now at right guard, maybe for the first few weeks of the season, if Brooks, if they take the slow approach with Brooks coming off that torn Achilles. You know, you got Wisniewski there, Sayamalu is going to be your left guard, you, you've got Matt Pryor, you've got Jordan Maialata, but of course, here's now Halapuli Vadi Vaitai, who has been your swing left tackle, right tackle, coming in for Lane Johnson in 2016, coming in for Jason Peters in 2017. They're moving him, he moved, he made the move to guard this offseason, and he took first team reps today with the Eagles at right guard. Interestingly enough, Wisniewski was actually the second team center Matt Pryor was the second team right guard. So, you know, Pryor, I talked about him the other day when I was talking about players that I want to keep an eye on at training camp. He is someone that could seemingly have a big role with the Eagles in the future because Wisniewski's future here is probably done after one more year and Jason Peters' future probably the same thing. And you never know how long a guy like Brandon Brooks is going to play. So, like, here's Matt Pryor that could instantly take over, but I would have thought Wisniewski's like the first guy up at guard, and he's not even one of the first two because Big V right now is actually looking like, you know, to start. It's day one, of course, take this all with a grain of salt, but Big V's the one that took first team reps at right guard. Was Newski more so maybe the guy that, God forbid, Jason Kelsey got hurt, which would be detrimental to this team and this offense. If Jason Kelsey got hurt, Was Newski right now is the uh, second team center, so maybe they're deciding to take the move there and who knows, maybe if, say, Amalu got hurt, Wisniewski won a Super Bowl with the Eagles as a starting left guard. But as of right now, as of day one, Big V's the guy at right guard with the first team prior taking second team reps, and Wisniewski was the second team center. So definitely interesting to keep an eye on the interior of the offensive line here as Brooks continues to recover from this torn ACL. On the defensive side, we talked about corner yesterday for literally 42 minutes. I hope you enjoyed that podcast. You guys all know I had a lot of fun doing that because I love the cornerback position and I'm very fascinated with these six Eagles corners all you know, vying for three starting jobs or maybe four if Maddox gets moved to safety. What it was today in base packages, it continued to be Razul Douglas and Avante Maddox on the outside, much like it was in minicamp. But then in nickel packages, which is basically going to be your new... It's no longer a sub package on defense. That's going to be your main. It's like nickel is the new base and base is the new nickel where, you know, base is going to be a sub package now. So Maddox went inside sometimes 
in the in minicamp mostly he was your slot corner and nickel. I think that's if he doesn't move to safety, that's probably what's going to happen. And Sidney Jones was playing on the outside with Razul Douglas, and that that's the dream for me and Gino is Sidney Jones and Razul on the outside with Maddox inside. But the Eagles did something interesting today too, though they had Sidney Jones taking reps inside with Maddox on the outside. So they had Razul Douglas and Maddox on the outside like they did down the stretch last year, but instead of Cravion LeBlanc in the slot, you go back to Sidney Jones, who started in the slot the first six weeks of the season last year. So that was really interesting, I thought. It's it's kind of cool. Uh, Greg Mosher, my guy from 97.3 ESPN South Jersey, where I'm, I'm a writer and I do uh, Eagles minutes for them on the air, he's a, a great Eagles independent reporter right now that also does on-air work for 97.3. He kind of compared it to how in the past there was, you know, Lito Shepard, Asante Samuel, and Sheldon Brown. And, you know, in main packages, it would be Sheldon Brown on the outside and Asante Samuel. But then in the nickel, instead of keeping Sheldon Brown on the outside, they would push him inside and they would have Lito Shepard come in on nickel packages and play outside corner. And how he compared that to now, the, how the Eagles could maybe do the same thing. You know, Avante Maddox and Darby, those two are going to play. But... Mosher made the interesting take that, hey, in base packages, they're not going to want to take Maddox off the field, so he'll be your outside corner, but then in nickel packages, you might move him inside all the time and have Sidney Jones or Razul Douglas or Jalen Mills be that other outside corner, whoever wins that battle. So that was really interesting because you would think with Jim Schwartz, he doesn't like to you know, affect multiple positions at one time. It's why he refused to not have Dexter McDougal in the slot last year for a couple of weeks instead of putting Darby or Mills inside and having Razul come in for the outside, which drove me nuts. But it's kind of interesting that he is experimenting with this. Him and Corey Unlin are deciding that, hey, actually, in base packages, we don't want to put Maddox on the sideline, so let's have him as your outside corner. But then, in the majority of the time on defense, when we have three corners or four corners out there, he'll play in the slot And, you know, a Razul Douglas or a Sidney Jones would end up coming in on the outside. I really like that idea. I just hope the guy that ends up coming in is not Jalen Mills. So if they don't move Maddox to safety, I really like that idea because for as much as I love Douglas and I love Jones and their potential, you can't, you can't deny what you saw on the field with Avante Maddox last year. And it makes perfect sense that outside of Ronald Darby, the Eagles probably are prioritizing Maddox being on the field this year at corner more so than any of the guys. So that's what happened today. Maddox and Douglas were the lead two guys. That's that's going to be the thing. I mean, Jones came in on, on nickel packages, which is really a promising sign. But, he, I mean, for guys saying that, oh, Jones is like the fifth corner now, he was never going to come in to start this summer ahead of Douglas and Maddox after the seasons that they had last year or Darby and Mills. I mean, Jones being the injured player he was and hasn't proven a whole lot. He's shown some promise, but he's got to, he's got to prove on the field and, and he, he has the opportunity this summer, but he was never going to start training camp as one of your first team guys ahead of Douglas or Maddox. Now in a month, Is he ahead of one of those guys? I wouldn't be surprised at all. You guys already know. I think he has the highest ceiling of any of these players. So that's an update on the cornerback battle. Day one here. We'll continue to track the CB Wars as the summer goes on. We're going to take one more break here. When we come back, let's get into some of the play-by-play. Let's see what actually happened in 11-on-11 drills. Day one of training camp for the Philadelphia Eagles at the NovaCare Complex. Don't go anywhere. This is the Locked On Eagles podcast. All right, now is the most fun time of the episode for me. I have been in love with training camp play-by-play tweets since 2012 when I joined Twitter. (laughs) And I, I, like, this is for the true Eagles nerds out there. But I feel like, for me, if you listen to Lockdown Eagles, you are a nerdy, diehard Eagles fan because we're posting four or five podcasts a week. (laughs) You know, it doesn't matter. It it can be the the thick of the dead zone, and we're still posting. We're still talking about Locked On Corey Clement, and we're doing stat predictions and talking about if, you know, certain Eagles will break records, and we're doing, like, ultimate offenses. So I already feel like if you're a loyal listener to this podcast, you're a big-time Eagles nerd, and you are with – the perfect show then because me and Gino and Lars biggest Eagles nerds you'll find. And one of one thing that comes with being that 
extreme football Eagles nerd is loving the play-by-play tweets from the beat reporters at training camp. And, you know, the dream for me is to be down there next year and to be one of those guys for you. Um, but for this year, we're tracking it on the training camp tracker. And, you know, it was, a, it was a great day, I would say, on the field for Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz continued his hot summer. He was great at mini camp. He, is, he looks very much at full health right now coming off that back injury. He put a pass perfectly over the shoulder of two defenders right into the hands of Nelson Aguilar who leaped over the cornerback and made a play 20 plus yards down the field. Do not sleep on Nelson Aguilar this year. There are so many weapons to talk about in this offense, but I think because of that and allowing Aguilar to just be predominantly in the slot this year, I think that's going to open up so much for him, not only you know across the middle of the field, but he's going to continue making those deep plays in the slot like he did last year and like he did in 2017. And he made a giant play with Carson Wentz today. Shout out to our boy, Andrew Sandejo, who probably wouldn't like this podcast because we've been calling for him to be cut for the entirety of his short Eagles career already. But he has the first interception of the summer. He picked off Nate Sudfeld today, a nice play. Uh, for me, my takeaway on the tracker was we still need that comp pick. Sorry, Sandejo. I'd rather have the fourth round pick than the pick in training camp. Some other things to get into here with the play by play. Wentz and Deshaun Jackson continue to click. There was three plays in a row where where Wentz completed a pass to Deshaun Jackson. The third one, Jackson was diving to the ground. I wrote an article on 97.3 ESPN yesterday about how Peterson can steal a page from Chip Kelly's playbook, how to fully maximize Deshaun Jackson's second year in Philadelphia. And I think, you know, of course, he is a home run hitter. That's what he's known for. It's what defenses fear when we're talking about how to defend Deshaun Jackson. But when said it today, you know, his ability run after the catch, his explosiveness underneath, he's never had a receiver like Deshaun Jackson. They tried with Torrey Smith, they tried with Mike Wallace, but never has he had, I mean, this is one of the best speed receivers of all time, one of the best deep threat receivers of all time, the guy that owns the most, the the record beating Jerry Rice for most 60 plus yard touchdowns, and he's probably going to break Rice's 50 plus yard touchdown record, he's five or six behind right now, but they're clicking. They're clicking. And our boy, Tyler Steggy, one of my favorite follows on Eagles Twitter, shout out to him. He's been on the show before. He said, you know, after seeing all these, you know, reports that Wentz and Deshaun are clicking, they were hitting on some big time routes down the field today and across the middle, just as a complete receiver that I think Jackson can be when they use him in that way. You know, of course, teams really just want to use him to stretch out the safeties and burn you for 80 plus yards. But at the same time, he can do everything. And Steggy tweeted out, you know, that's that's your leading receiver in 2019. And I'm starting to, you know, we're going to do our stat predictions episode in a couple weeks, but I'm starting to think that might be the case, that Deshaun Jackson might end up leading this. I don't know if it's going to be in receptions and or yards or if it's going to be touchdowns or something, but Deshaun Jackson is going to lead this team in at least one or two categories in 2019. Wentz has really clicked with him. And again, he's the kind of receiver that Wentz should click with. You know, a speed receiver, Wentz loves to push the ball down the field, but also just the routes that Deshaun has the most success with. They're also the same routes that Carson Wentz has the most success with. So it's not a shock at all that these guys continue to grow this chemistry that they have. And the nostalgia and the emotion of everybody seeing that live part of the live stream Deshaun Jackson calling for it deep when they're just you know they're just warming up but Carson Wentz is like 50 yards away from Jackson and Jackson does the you know throw it up and Wentz puts it right on the money and it's just ah uh, I can't you know we uh, here's here's an early toast to all the Wentz to Deshaun Jackson bombs that we could see in 2019 and they were uh, they started off training camp very hot they were clicking together today and then uh, a big play for our guy Sidney Jones he had a big time pass breakup on a throw across the middle from Nate Sudfeld to Sony Michelle's brother Mark and Michelle who right now is on the roster bubble trying to maybe beat out Shelton Gibson and Greg Ward and you know Braxton Miller for that sixth receiver spot but uh, Sidney Jones got the best of him on a play coming across swatting it down these are the kind of plays Jones needs to make early. You know, like we said, right now he's behind Maddox and Douglas and probably Darby and Mills. But if he can show 
that Washington potential that made him a second round pick and would have made him a top 15 pick in 2017. If he can start that off hot right now while Jalen Mills is on the PUP list, he's going to have a real chance at beating out Douglas or Mills for that other outside job or whatever spot that's opened up for, you know, if they move Maddox to safety, then there could be two spots for him to convince the Eagles to give him. But, you know, he's got to start off hot. He's got to stay healthy. And uh, he, he did that today. He made, you know, he they moved him around the formation on the outside in the slot. And he made a nice play on the ball. It was against the second team. But regardless, these are the plays that he's got to make to, you know, supplant his stake in this competition at the cornerback position. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this recap of day one for Eagles training camp at NovaCare Complex. Thank you for joining me. Gino and I will be back tomorrow as well. We'll get into day two of practice, but we also got some other stuff planned. I'm not going to get into what we're going to talk about tomorrow. You're going to have to tune in tomorrow. You got to make sure you subscribe to the show and have every episode downloaded so you can get these four to five episodes a week right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. If you could leave us a five-star rate and a review, we would really appreciate that. And also, if you want to keep the conversation going, if you have anything today that you disagreed with on the podcast or you, uh, an assessment that you agree with, follow us at Lockdown Birds or at DiBiase, L-O-E, also Gino at Gino underscore L-O-E, and then, of course, LockedOnEagles.com. Like I said, we got that training camp tracker up for you right now, and every podcast is posted up there as well as some written content that Lars is actually going to be dropping at the end of this week. All right, that's going to do it. I'm Lou DiBiase. Peace out. Eagles training camp. Football's back. Love it. Love it. Go Birds, baby. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for listening. And like I just said, let's go Birds.